Hey, my name is Tim Buell. I'm a drummer living in Nashville, Tennessee. Today we're talking about how to build backing tracks for a live show in Ableton. One, two, three, four. All right, we're over at the computer and now we're gonna go ahead and start. So I have in this folder right here, I have something, a track called Blank Space. We have the backing track. And what you wanna make sure is when you have your track, you wanna make sure that you list the BPM. So I'm gonna write 145 BPM on this backing track so that I know no matter what, I can look at the file name and make sure that I can always get back to the original BPM of the song. And then I have another folder that is click and counts. Personally, I don't use the internal Ableton click track because I find it can get a little weird in certain cases. So we're gonna build a click track and I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you want these click track alert tracks and this blank space, files so that you can build your tracks easier. You can actually download those for free in the description. So check those out and let's start building. So I've opened up Ableton. This is my template. Yours might look a little different, but basically all you'll need to do is have four different audio tracks. One of them is going to be for click. One of them is going to be for alerts or counts. One of them is going to be for the backing track. This is just a stereo backing track today, but if you have more instruments in your backing track setup, you can just add more audio tracks. And then this other one is for tempo, which we're going to get to in a minute. So now what I can do is bring up this file of stuff and I'm going to drag in the blank space. I'm going to drag in the backing track. I'm going to drag in these alert sounds. Uh, those are actually click sounds. And then I'm also going to drag in counts one, two, three, and four. All right, so let me take you through these samples. We have click track sounds. This is the downbeat. This is the, you know, beats two, three, and four. This is the upbeat. We have some count sounds. One, two, three, four. And then we have the full-on backing track here. The first thing we want to do is, what I want to do is I want to drop a marker where I'm going to start this. And I'm not even going to start this at the beginning of the session. I'm just going to start it where I dropped it, which is measure nine. I have, you hit command K, you can see I have to set a marker. I have that set up as the letter M. So I'm going to hit an M right here. And I can select this and rename it and name it commodity. So now I know, okay, that's where commodity starts. Normally, a lot of people use the tempo automation lane down here at the bottom to set the tempo. And that way, the Ableton click track is going to be set to the thing. And uh, that's all great. But what I found is the more you use the automation lane in Ableton, the harder it is to move stuff around. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this blank silence that I inserted as the thing that controls what tempo this song is at. So if I hit command option L to bring up my kind of loop browser down here, um, I can select this blank space and I can hit warp. I can hit leader, make sure that this is the leader, and then I'm going to set the segment BPM to 145. And, you know, for whatever reason, you have to unclick leader and click it again. But now that this is set as the leader and the segment BPM is 145, you can notice that our project, because I'm highlighted where this blank space is, our project tempo is now 145. If I click over here, it's back to 120. But anywhere below this kind of blank space, we have, you know, our tempo of 145. So that's good. So now I'm going to drag this backing track right to it. So now what I can do is I can actually play now that this is set to leader and this is set to follower. I can actually play this song, select my blank space, drag the segment BPM down. And you'll see my project tempo is changing. So this blank space now controls the tempo of whatever falls underneath it. That's how we're going to change the tempo because that means I can copy and paste this stuff anywhere else in the session. And because the blank space track is controlling the tempo, I don't need to worry about the automation and all of that stuff, which can sometimes get a little tricky when you start moving stuff around. Let's go and build our click track because right now, since we're not using the Ableton one, um, we don't have a click track and we, and we need one. So I'm going to drag this stuff over and I'm going to zoom in and basically all we do is we build a click track 
out of these samples. So here's a measure. And that sounds like a measure to me. I can go ahead and highlight that, hit join, and duplicate that out. Delete these. And I'm going to tighten up this here. And then since this click track is built out, I can double check it in a couple different spots against the track. So that click track works, it's built out perfectly. I can now zoom out, hit all those, Command J them, combine them. Now we're gonna do a similar thing with our counts. So basically I'm gonna have a two bar count off and it will sound a little bit like one, two, one, two, three, four. And our backing track actually doesn't start for another measure. So I'm actually gonna just move those over. One. Two, one, two, three, four. So now we have that. I'm gonna hit Command J on that. So now we have a solid count in. And I'm gonna not only put that there, but I'm also gonna go to the end of the song and I'm gonna add like a count out essentially. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now I have my count in, I have my count out. And there's also a spot, I know this because of, you know, just I've played this song live a trillion times. There's the spot where everything drops out and then, you know, the band comes in nice and full. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a bar of count there. One, two, three, four. So that whoever's playing the gig knows that that break is intentional. All right, so I have that. I'm gonna hit Command J, join all of that. And now we are almost totally set up with a song in Ableton. And you know, my process when I build tracks is I always build a new click track and new counts for every song. I found that if you, you know, if you take this click track we just built, move it to a new session and just warp it to the new tempo, the the click track starts to degrade, starts to sound weird. So I just always when I start a new building a new song in the session for backing tracks, I just drag in those click track samples, build the, a measure of the click really quick and then copy and paste it throughout the song. So what I can also do is I can also take this blank space we have and I can trim this down to something more like that. Um, that will be a little bit better. So now what I need to do is make sure that this click track and these alerts are set to warp, which they are. And they're also set to follower, which again, just like the backing track, that means that now when I change the tempo, the segment BPM of this blank space, it's gonna change the click, the alert, and the tempo of the backing track. So if I go over here in the song, I can select uh, my clip for blank space. One, two, three, four. There you go. That's kind of how you do it. And from here, what I would do is I would then place markers throughout the whole song so that, you know, the whole song is constructed. But what I want to do is make sure that I can jump around the song and see where the verses are, where the choruses are. So here is how I'd place markers. I just play through the song. I hit M to drop a marker. I rename it whatever it is of the section. And then I go on keep listening to the song. All right, so I've added these markers and these markers are really, really important because what I, it allows me to do is, first of all, I can hit Command K and assign the very first marker I dropped, the very one that says commodity at the beginning of it. I can take this marker and put a number, uh, let's say number one. 
So now I have a command that when I hit the number one, it jumps right to the beginning of the song, which means during a set, I can program however many songs I have. I can use numbers one through nine and just program the very first marker of a song to be whatever you know order the set is. What dropping these other markers allow me to do is now as I'm playing through this song, I can hit as it's playing, I can hit, I've assigned capital Z and capital A as what jumps me from one marker to the next. So I wanna make sure that my kind of jump time here is set to one bar. But what that allows me to do is as the track plays, I can kind of navigate the song. So if we need to take a section again or skip to the next section, I can do that hitting Z and A on my keypad. Two, three, four. So I can now jump around the song like, you know, as we play, if the vocalist forgets that we need to repeat the chorus and they jump right to the bridge, I can set that up. I can cue it up and jump where we need to go via the section.